Hello and welcome to Snowbombing Backstage. My name is Jess Izat and this is the second live stream of many that I'm going to be hosting in the lead up to Snowbombing. I'm chatting to different artists and DJs from Snowbombing's amazing lineup to get you all excited for the festival coming up this coming April. And today I'm chatting to one of the best DMV DJs and producers in the game right now, Cardinal Sound. How are we? Hi Jess, thank you very much. Very kind. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm loving. I'm loving the festive energy that you're bringing. Yeah, I get really into Christmas. It's, Do uh, you? <laughs> yeah, it's it's the personal trait. Yeah, I love Christmas. What do you have on top of the tree? Is that like an angel? There's, there's a little yeah. There's a little star, um, and the bauble theme are green, gold, and black. And we've got like a little lemon cello bauble vibe going on here as well. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's good you need to have the little like random ones hidden in there don't you yeah of course little like uh keepsakes from over the years although you're also I'm loving the theme yeah great thank you <laughs> <laughs> um so we were we just uh off air we're chatting and I know that you went to snowbombing this year was that was that your first time it was yeah um and I'm not even like a ski person either so you know, I've got loads of friends who, and my cousin as well as like an avid skier. So this was my first ski experience and to have it at snow bombing while I was DJing and stuff was very special and definitely one of the best weeks of, of my life so far, for sure. Oh my God. Amazing. So wait, did you actually like, did you go on the slopes? Did you ski? Yeah. So me and uh, my two friends, Kieran and Priye, we learned to ski on our last day at snow bombing. Um, <laughs> like right at the end of the week as well so we were honestly the most worst for wear characters at the festival but we're giving everything to try and learn to ski in about two hours i was gonna say if there's any advice that i'd give to people whether they've skied or not before is definitely ski at the beginning because towards mm -hmm. the end from my experience um worst for wear is like a very nice way of putting it <laughs> Yeah, we were we were in a rough patch, but um, we we did all right. You know, I've got funny videos still. I spent more time going backwards than I spent going forwards, but <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to perfect it for next year. What's your ski gear saying? Are you like are you like bold and bright, or are you quite sleek? I'm going to wear cool stuff or retro. I think it was just it was like all black. I wore. I'm going to try and up okay. that game for next year. Yeah, I was going to say it's like quite like very drum and bass, very do. like cool vibes yes yeah, it's, it's a bit <laughs> moody isn't it like monochrome but uh, yeah i'm gonna try go bold and bright next year nice okay i'm gonna hold you to that um what what were your standout moments from the festival though do you remember any bits that you saw like even where you played like what what was good for you definitely like one big highlight was um having johnny bongos from bongos bingo hosting my like one of my sets um <laughs> like on the slopes it was actually carnage like those boys had just uh done a set and obviously if you've been to bongos bingo before you know what <laughs> what their vibe is and you know i didn't want him to leave because i was like if you leave everyone's like the vibe is just going to die completely you know, <laughs> johnny was going absolutely nuts on the mic and i was like right mate please stay and just host my set and uh he did very kindly and uh yeah it was it was a really funny carnage set it was it was jokes I'm literally obsessed with that. I love that. It was like such good vibes that he was just like, yeah, I'm going to stick yeah, around and carry on. It was really good uh, vibes. Have you stayed like in the... touch with him since? Yeah, so he's going to do it again next year. Oh my God, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. Do we, wait, do we have a time and place for this? I don't think so yet, but um, yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we were, yeah, we've spoken about it. And he's actually playing at my festival um, in June uh, at the Cambridge Club. So yeah we're um oh. we're in touch oh, okay okay this is cool i feel like snow bombing is like birth the new amazing duo <laughs> yeah he's uh i think he was more gassed about being a dmb mc for like the first time in his life <laughs> he um yeah he was he was overly excited about that bless him did you have to give him any like pointers because i feel like that's quite like a deep end to be thrown in no he had a he had a, a few set bars which were enough to get us through <laughs> it's quite funny <laughs> yeah shout out johnny he's a he's a legend 
Yeah, we're shouting out Johnny here. Lucy's already got involved, just saying, love bongos. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's unreal. All right. So last time we had Ariel on backstage at Snowbombing and we played uh, a game of instead of Shag, Marry, Avoid, we do Sledge, Spa and Rave. Ariel thought sparring as in like fighting. I'm just going to put it out there now. Okay. It's like, you know, actually going to the spa. So it's not sparring. You're not going to fight anyone. Right. Um, Got you. <laughs> obviously, we've got loads of other amazing DMV artists on the snow bombing lineup this year. I feel like that's just going to go off. Um, I'm going to give you. So on the lineup for Sledge, Spa mm -hmm. and Rave, Brucey, Piri and Tommy, and sub focus okay so you have to tell me who you'd want to sledge with who you'd want to yeah. spar with and who you'd want to yeah. rave with out of those three okay this is actually quite an easy one i think so i would sledge with brucey i think he everywhere he goes is a bit carnage so it'd be quite funny to watch <laughs> him sledging I would rave with Piri and Tommy um, just because I think that, you know, their youthfulness will remind me of my <laughs> early raving days. Um, and I would definitely spar with Subfocus because I know that he he loves a spar. He loves a chill out. So, yeah, Subfocus is going to be my spar guy. What, <laughs> what treatment are you getting in the spa with Subfocus? <laughs> I hope he doesn't see this, but um, <laughs> probably just go like full body or what's that treatment where you get all the hot rocks on your back? Oh yeah. The hot, I feel like that's ah. a hot rocks massage. Is it just called hot rocks? Yeah. Okay. Hot rocks. I think so. I think that's what they have on the menu. I've never actually had one of those. So I um, feel like that's a good choice. Um, cool. Yeah. Sledge spa rave. Uh, hopefully we can make that happen in the mountains. I feel like that is actually possible. <laughs> Um, and I know, obviously, like we've got snow outside, which is very thematic for uh, snow bombing. But I know that you had a wicked year. Your summer was jam packed. Um, festivals like Boomtown, and obviously, like a huge Glasto back it, years and years, and it was iconic. Um, tell me about your summer. Like, what were your highlights from this summer? Um, yeah, the two that you mentioned, you know, were massive. Like the Boomtown thing really surprised me this year um because i was playing really early on on like the first day um not realizing that i was on the only stage that was open at boomtown so <laughs> like when i so when i started there was about 50 people there just like shouting telling us to hurry up and then by the time i finished like i'd look up and there was about three thousand people in front of me which was bonkers um especially in that heat so shout out to everyone at boomtown who saw that that was yeah very special for me um my first time at boomtown as well which is which is great so yeah looking forward to going back um yeah glasto was cool glasto was um glasto is always just really special like it's just one of those places and you know i've been going for like the last three years um and it's one of those things that you just want to go back every year i don't think i'll ever get bored of it because it's just so massive just so much going on so much you know that you you leave every year undiscovered um so yeah that's that's i'm obsessed with going back there uh secret garden party as well did a little oh, did a little house there <laughs> yeah SGP. that was that was really cool again one of those things where i played really early and you know i was expecting my group of 20 mates and 10 other people to stick around and then look up again and it, the pagoda was full um which is great like that's that's the best feeling when you when you think it's going to be not as ramo and then it ends up being full for your set line. Yeah, that's the best feeling. I literally love the uh, the pagoda. It's like one of the best little hangout spots. And once you're on there, you don't yeah, really want to ever leave. No, oh, that was so a big amazing. problem this year. Like, everyone just didn't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you have you have your own festival, right? Yeah, so we run a couple of festivals. Um, the strawberries and cream in Cambridge, and I still have yet named... to go to strawberries and cream. I need to go. Yeah, that's that needs to be on your bucket list for next year. Oh, definitely. Um, up. Yeah, Was that, um, do you do you play at your own festival? Are you too busy? Mm, yeah, I didn't do it this year actually because I was too busy. But uh, generally speaking, yeah. 
Oh, amazing. Um, we have actually, yeah, people at home, if you're watching, you can get involved with questions. Uh, Maddie's actually asked, what do you have in store for SB23? I feel like they might have missed the beginning because you've let like a huge, massive duo, just like you've revealed what's happening, <laughs> some of what's happening. I think, uh, yeah, should we tell them about that? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay, yeah, so me and Johnny Bongos, we, we performed together uh in sb 2022 and uh when you guys released the lineup i sent him a message and was like should we just replicate that carnage set that we did last year and he was really up for it so hopefully um snowbombing can find a place for us to do that and cause some more <laughs> chaos so popular that it is back i mean yeah you got to give the people what they <laughs> it did go off and it was just hilarious because like there was a Pikachu running down the Alps and this guy in drag running after her and the the bar owner like jumped up on the balcony and took all his clothes off and it was it was just mental. I didn't really know where to look a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's so amazing. Um something else as well that I wanted to ask you about because uh we were just talking about summer and obviously you've mentioned like the big festivals, ones that we'd sort of expect you to be at, but there was one that stood out for me and you've done a TikTok about it, which just made me laugh a lot. So you opened up for Diana Ross. Yeah, that was... What, like, what <laughs> happened was... there? How does that happen? That, and where did that That was from? one of the weirdest, yeah, 12 hours of my life. So <laughs> our second festival that we run in Cambridge is called the Cambridge Club. And we had Diana Ross headline last year. Um, and I... You know, I played at the festival, obviously, um, and from what I gather, the the team for this next Diana show, like the week after, their DJ dropped out or something, I think, um, and they were trying, they were like scrambling to replace him, and apparently, like, they just thought, right, what about the guy from last week? And I got the call <laughs> at like eleven in the morning, I think, and I had to be on stage at four. I had to drive down to like Bristol way from London. Um, and get a set ready which obviously you know I, I can hold my own in like a little disco banger set but to do that in front of a load of Diana Ross fans who were not expecting someone like me to walk out there was <laughs> a very daunting experience but managed to convert a few I think had a few hands in the air but yeah that was that was a wild 12 hours yeah people definitely need to check out the TikTok because there's this like pocket of people that were like here for you you had them yeah in your hand but everyone else was a bit like not quite convinced at first were they i think they were expecting a support band not just a boat <laughs> walking out there playing cheesy bangers but yeah <laughs> did you get to hang out with diana ross, diana ross a bit no she was and rightly so um she you know she was very covid conscious so she kept away but um she signed one of my records actually which was nice of her. Um, gave that to a tour manager last year, um, uh -oh. and she yeah sorted me out. So yeah, she was she was great as well. She is an incredible performer. Yeah. Oh my god, that is like she's iconic. Just being able to say that you did that is like I mean fair play. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, and on so obviously I've been looking at the snow bombing lineup, and I've just been so impressed with like some of the new talent that they've booked for next year like people who are on the rise who which artists are you loving at the moment that you can talk about i think like Piri and tommy make such infectious like hybrid drum and bass and garage and you know pop stuff which which is really cool um you know those guys have definitely created a sound of their own built their own kind of following which is really cool to see and you know they're definitely the next gen of you know dance pop artists for sure uh good to see hybrid minds on there like love those guys um sub focus and dimension back to back they are back to back aren't they yeah uh... that's <laughs> are they back to back i'm not sure yeah maybe. but either way <laughs> either way you know they they don't disappoint at all um i saw them back to back at glastonbury so hopefully it is back to back but We'll see. Um, Harriet Jackson as well, absolute legend. She's she kills it every time. Um, and Jamie XX, I'm excited to see what he pulls out for sure. 
I haven't seen him in a long time. We have uh, someone called Ethan getting involved saying, Cardinal Sound times Perry and Tommy collab and then three question marks. So I feel like they mean it. I feel like if we, if I get to meet them and we do the uh, the raving thing, then yeah, it could be on the cards, but <laughs> I don't actually know them yet. So, you know, I have to introduce myself at least. Hey, look, I reckon they'd be keen. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Do you like collabing with people? Is that like a thing or do you have like your own set way of um, that you like to work and your own sort of sound that you'd stick by? I like collaborating with vocalists a lot. Um, there's always like a degree of magic when you get into a studio with someone like a really talented vocalist and you're with them in the same space and enjoying that moment together. I think that's really important when you're making music and collaborating with someone um, and doing it, you know, via getting the vocal sent to you is just not really the same vibe. Um, I've got a tune out next year with Lottie Jones, um, who's an incredibly talented singer. She's worked with, um, you know, like Fred V and loads of other people. <clears throat> um, and we just got in a room together and, you know, we gassed each other up about it. And the more gas she got, the, the better she was doing the, the, the takes. So it's really important, I think, for when you're working with a vocalist to, yeah, collaborate in the same room together. Is that going to come as part of a new project or... Is this like a standalone single? Like, what's coming? Because you haven't released any music this year, have you? It was a uh, no. I, it was yeah. I think actually the last tune was like February of this year. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's been a while. Um, but yeah, there's a few singles coming out next year. Um, been working hard on the music um, with like new management and yeah, just uh, it's. It's been a it's been a wait for a reason, put it that way. Okay, okay. Right. Well, that sounds very promising. Um, also mm. next year in terms of like gigs and stuff, do you have um stuff that we can look forward to? Obviously snow bombing. <laughs> Obviously snow bombing, yeah. Um what else is on the cards? The there's Funk Up the Farm, which was just announced like a couple of days ago. Um so shout out those guys. I think um boomtown again glasto again um obviously strawberries and cream next year I'm trying to think of what else is like announced and like quite a lot of shows there's like e1 in january um there's i'm playing with hybrid minds in northampton in february i think That's something like that. yeah there's a few yeah a few shows and it's exciting that next year's festival stuff is coming in already this is it as well though we're in that period of time where it's like we're getting sent stuff but it's like am i allowed to say that yeah i'm not really sure <laughs> <laughs> exactly um also can you tell me about uh how you're spending this christmas because i feel like djs we see them working really really hard till almost like two weeks into december and then after that they hibernate until new year's so um how mm. do you spend your christmas so for me it's a bit different because obviously i've got these two festivals to like carry on with basically throughout the um throughout the festive period and i also you know spend my nine to five working with those festivals so i have to graft a bit more i guess in the sense that when christmas comes i need to be sitting down and writing for next year um Whereas if this was like my main main hustle, I'd be able to do that throughout the week. So, yeah, for me, this, you know, a big part of this Christmas is going to be spent writing. Um, and eventually, you know, maybe like the 23rd, unwind for a bit. Um, and I'm not actually playing anywhere New Year's Eve this year either, which is good. Just kind <laughs> of having a nice, nice break for like a full week, which will be really helpful. God, literally only sleeps one one week a year. <laughs> yeah, it feels like that sometimes. Uh, well, for people, I'm. I mean, this is all we have time for now. But just quickly before we go, now that you've been snow bombing, what can people mm -hmm. look forward to? Like, what would you recommend they definitely go and do? And what are you most excited to see next year? Okay, cool. My big recommendations 
there's the racket club that was great i had a lot of fun in there um just going out and maybe not necessarily having a plan like we kind of just went with the flow for the whole week which was great and like most mornings we got up as early as we could after you know the night before and we just walked and we just breathed in the the alpine air and stuff which you know for me as a first timer was really special because i've never seen mountains and alps or anything like that um in the flesh before so yeah making the most of being where you are because it's a seriously beautiful location and the air is really good for you definitely um the woods are sick uh who did i see there last year bicep i think um i missed that you know which is so yeah which is incredible like you know there's so much going on and there's so much fun stuff and everyone there is an absolute legend and um easy to get along with so even if you go out with just a couple of you you're going to make a ton of friends and yeah you'll have a good time yeah for sure well thank you uh so much everyone for getting involved look out for the next snow bombing backstage live which will be coming soon and of course in the meantime you can check out the snow bombing website and socials instagram tiktok all of the above to keep up to date with all things snow bombing and also book your sb23 package cardinal sound thank you so much for joining us my pleasure thank you so much <laughs>